Hello and welcome to Haunted Montreal's Spooky Story Sessions. I'm your host, Holly Rhiannon, and today I'm going to tell you about Maison Pierre de Calvet. Here at Haunted Montreal, we bring you ghost stories in both French and English every Saturday. But before we get into today's story, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you get notified every time we have a new tale to share. And hey, if you're already subscribed, big thank you and welcome back. We're so happy to have you. Now, without further ado, let's get spooky. Maison Pierre de Calvé is one of the oldest houses in Montreal, the sixth oldest to be exact. Built during the French Regimen in 1725, the house has remarkable architecture and a fascinating history. From the outside, the Breton stone facade is built with three foot thick field stone walls, iron window shutters, tall chimneys, French windows, and a pitched roof. The home had to be constructed out of stone after a law passed following a devastating fire in 1721 that forbade wooden structures inside the city walls. It is named after Pierre de Calvé, one of Montreal's more colorful characters historically. A Huguenot merchant from France, he sailed for New France in 1758 after a cousin-in-law provided him with the capital needed to purchase goods for trading. Unfortunately, Le Lyon, the ship that he was on, was shipwrecked about 100 miles from Quebec. With his cargo lost, he was forced to find employment upon his arrival. After much hard work, he recovered and operated as a merchant for two years until the British conquest of 1760. The new British overlords soon appointed him as Justice of the Peace, perhaps due to his Protestant faith. In 1771, Pierre de Calvé purchased the old stone building following his marriage to a woman named Marie-Louise Jusson, where he intended to raise a large family with her. Unfortunately, two of their three children would die in infancy. To make matters worse, only three years after his marriage in 1774, his wife passed away, some say under mysterious circumstances. The following year, Montreal was invaded by Americans and occupied by the newly formed Continental Army during the American Revolutionary War. The objective of the campaign was to gain military control of the British province of Quebec and to convince the French-speaking Canadien to join the revolution on the side of the 13 colonies. With the American army occupying Montreal in 1775, Pierre de Calvé raised eyebrows when he openly supported the invaders. Not only did he offer them supplies, but he also hosted meetings inside his home with American leaders, including Benjamin Franklin himself. The American occupation lasted only 188 days, and the British authorities were not happy with Pierre de Calvé once the invading army had fled the city. He was accused of being a traitor and was imprisoned for three years. His home was seized by the British government. Pierre de Calvé would spend the rest of his life unsuccessfully trying to prove his innocence to the British while simultaneously attempting to get compensation from the Americans for his support. He was lost at sea in 1784 when the Shelburne, the ship that he was sailing on from New York City to France, sank in the Atlantic Ocean. Over the following years, the house exchanged hands many, many times and was even inhabited by Jacques Viguer, the first mayor of Montreal. By 1960, Old Montreal was practically a ghost town. Legions of farmers had abandoned the Place Jacques Cartier as a place of commerce following the closure of Bon Secure Market. The Old Montreal district became deserted and counted only about 200 or so people living there. Heritage activists who were trying to preserve the district among constant threats of demolition worked hard to secure a historic designation for the storied neighborhood. Due to their efforts in 1960, plans for an elevated expressway through Old Montreal were abandoned and the Ville-Marie auto route was built farther to the north. When authorities were finally persuaded that Old Montreal was worth keeping, it was designated a historic district by the government of Quebec in 1964. In 1962, Jean-Jacques Trottier and Gertrude Beaupre Trottier decided to become part of this heritage solution. They relocated their family and seven children to the old house of Pierre de Calvé, where they founded the restaurant Les Fils du Roy. They furnished the house with a wide range of beautiful antiques, including wicker chairs with cushions made from boys' pants. The couple also adorned the walls with family portraits. 
Gaetan Trottier, son of Jean-Jacques, and his associate, Ronald Dravine, would later purchase Maison Pierre de Calvet to keep the magnificent building in the Trottier family. Most recently, Maison Pierre du Calvet was an intimate nine-room boutique hotel known for hosting private receptions, business meetings, weddings, and romantic getaways. Its gourmet restaurant, Les Fils du Roy, specialized in Québécois cuisine. The hotel had a beautiful interior decor, including many antiques, and its rooms were luxurious. It even featured a Victorian greenhouse where three bilingual parrots named Pedro, Chico, and Coquette lived. Maison Pierre du Calvet was popular with celebrities like Richard Gere, Sophia Loren, and Brad Pitt, who resided there in 2007 while shooting portions of The Curious Case of Benjamin Button in Montreal. With rooms that rented for almost $400 per night, the Maison Pierre du Calvet offered an unforgettable experience for guests who wanted to soak up Montreal's history and possibly witness a ghost. Various sources suggest that the inn was haunted and that apparitions of both Marie-Louise Jusome and a card-shuffling man dressed in 19th century clothing were seen on many different occasions. Some guests reported hearing disembodied voices, including entire conversations. In another case, a deep imprint appeared on the just-made bed in room number one, almost as though someone were sleeping there. Light anomalies were also seen and photographed in this room. A strange female presence believed to be Marie Louise was felt through the inn. Some would feel the ghost to be benevolent, whereas others found her outright menacing. Marie Louise was often seen and felt in room three, where one guest complained of a woman sitting on the edge of her bed all night long, which prevented her from getting any sleep. In 2016, a woman named Katerina, a holistic health coach from the San Francisco Bay Area, booked herself into Maison Pierre de Calvet after hearing that it was haunted. She wrote on her blog how she had read reviews before booking it and what sold it to her were the ghost stories, adding how her readers knew how much she loved connecting with the paranormal. Her story continued, believe it or not, at around seven in the morning, the ghost appeared. It was completely dark in the room and Katerina felt someone grabbing her arm and just holding it. She felt the presence and started to panic, but was unable to move, scream, or open her eyes, no matter how hard she tried. She was not sure how much time passed, but eventually was able to kick with her foot, open her eyes, and get up. She then asked her husband to turn on the TV so that there would be some light in the room. Katerina was pretty shaken up for a while after that, but forced herself back to sleep because at that point she really needed it. <laughs> According to another guest who left a review on TripAdvisor, room three of the inn was definitely haunted. She wrote that when they checked in, they were taken to their room, which Brad Pitt had just checked out of. The room was on the first floor with a beautiful bed, very antique looking, and the reviewer noted how she felt like a princess upon arrival. They then stayed in the hotel for three nights. As for the ghost, the second night, the reviewer woke up and looked at the foot of the bed. Strangely, there was a man there, in clothing from the late 1800s, sitting at the table by the foot of the bed, just shuffling some cards. The presence of ghosts at this time was also verified in Haunted Canada number no. 5, where a version of the story written by Joel A. Sutherland is entitled Step Into the Cold. Sutherland mentions that the staff had witnessed bizarre things and felt an angry presence in the rooms and the halls. He speculated that the ghost of Marie Louise interacted not only with staff and guests, but even with the parrots living in the greenhouse. Concerning the staff, Sutherland describes a man who was working in the hotel's restaurant one night who felt the presence of Marie Louise while cleaning up alone. According to the author, at first the spirit seemed pleasant enough and the man tried to ignore it, unaware that he did so at his own peril. For the ghost demanded attention, and he began to feel that her presence was becoming menacing. Eventually, the unseen company of the ghost became too oppressive for him to carry on with his closing duties, and so he screamed at the top of his lungs for her to go away and leave him alone. Apparently, Marie Louise finally got the message and backed off, leaving him in peace from that day forward. Concerning the guests, according to Sutherland, while the ghost of Du Calvet's wife often terrorized the female visitors, she was flirtatious with men, often winking at them. 
Sutherland believes that the ghost of Marie Louise would keep one eye on female visitors and another on males, writing that men staying at the hotel had seen her ghost step from the shadows and smile at them with a wink, while Marie Louise gave women the literal cold shoulder. The reason for this, speculates Sutherland, is that in life, Marie Louise Jusson may not have been very faithful to her husband. According to his research, rumors swirled around Montreal claiming that Marie Louise got along well, too well, with her husband's male guests who stayed overnight in their home. These accusations found their way to de Calvé's ear and infected his mind like maggots wriggling in his brain. Some believe that his jealousy blackened his soul, and in a fit of rage, he murdered his young wife for her accused sins. As for the parrots, Sutherland also mentioned that the colorful birds in the greenhouse sometimes would communicate with Marie Louise's ghost. The three parrots were generally known to greet guests passing through the greenhouse with a chirpy allo allo, which was friendly and never failed to warm the hearts of those to hear it. Except of course, when the room was empty, and Pedro and Chico could be heard welcoming unseen visitors into their greenhouse. It is believed that animals are more highly attuned to the spirits of the departed, and the hotel's employees would make sure to give the greenhouse a wide berth when they heard the parrots talking to an empty room. With so many stories about ghostly activity, Maison Pierre de Calvé had all the hallmarks of being a haunted house. However, proprietor Gaetan Trottier didn't appreciate all the rumors. He would deny that the house was haunted because he himself did not believe in ghosts. He claimed that there were no spirits haunting the establishment, but rather that the old building simply radiates magic from its thick stone walls. Indeed, in 2014, he told CBC News, The house is very magical. When you come into the house, you feel a particular atmosphere. It's, it's like a person, and you really feel it. Perhaps fed up with all the stories about the building being haunted, in 2014, the Trache family put Maison Pierre de Calvé up for sale with the asking price of 9.5 million. After 55 years of ownership, maintaining the inn had become burdensome for the Trache family. After sitting on the market for several years, it was finally sold in 2017. The new owners are the same people who operate the nearby restaurant La Champagnerie, a gourmet bistro that specializes in fine champagnes. At this time, there are no new plans announced for the Maison Pierre de Calvé. It is listed as permanently closed. But whatever is decided to be done with it, one thing is certain. In purchasing the ancient and allegedly ghost-ridden Maison Pierre de Calvé, its current owners may have gotten more than they bargained for. Are you a Montreal resident or perhaps a tourist who experienced something strange at Maison Pierre du Calvé? If so, we'd love to know. As always, we want to hear your theories about what could be going on. Thank you so much for stopping by. If this is your first video, we hope you'll stick around for the next one. We put out videos in both French and English every Saturday. If you'd like to learn more about the organization founded by the talented Donovan King, it's all listed in the description down below, along with links to purchase tickets to in-person haunted storytelling tours. Remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. We'll have a new video out for you next Saturday, but until then, stay spooky.